University had some devices clinging to the edge of the map a full 500 meters out. So for these extreme distances, we can use the Switch dedicated long-range port. Hi tech enthusiasts, welcome back to Fast Cabling. So this is a university. They had a mission, blanket their entire campus with high-speed Wi-Fi and 4K security coverage. Sounds straightforward, right? But their plan hits a wall, or more accurately, a distance limit. You see, all their critical devices like security cameras and Wi-Fi access point were spread out between 200 to 500 meters from this central control office, and that created a perfect storm of problems. Problem 1, the 100 meters limit of standard Ethernet and PoE. Their switches in the office couldn't talk or power devices past that point. And problem 2, limited power out in the field. Well, you can't just plug a camera on a tree, right? And problem 3, running fiber optic to every single device? Prohibitively expensive for this scale. So. What were the options? So the first idea is PoE extenders. You just pop one in every 100 meters to boost the signal. But think about it. For 500 meters run, that's four extra boxes you need to mount, power, and protect from the elements. Each one is a potential failure point. If one goes down at 3 a.m., Good luck finding it. Hours of troubleshooting, not ideal. So they threw out the obvious solution. And it's that they went with this. The WebSmart Long Range PoE Switch. Now this was the ultimate solution for distributing power and data way beyond the old rules. The core idea is beautiful in its simplicity. Instead of daisy chaining a bunch of boosters, this switch creates a direct long-range highway from the control room to each and every device, sending both power and data. So one dedicated, isolated channel per camera or SS point. If one lane has an issue, the others keep humming. Reliability skyrockets. So now let's talk setup. First, the 250 meters range. This is the sweet spot for most cameras. You just plug in a high quality copper cable like FIV or CAT6 directly from the switch to our 4K camera. No extra boxes, but here's the clever bit. You have to log in to our switch super clean web interface and find the port enable CCTV mode, which is downgrade to 10 megabit per second. Now, what does a CCTV mode do? It intelligently trade a bit of bandwidth for rock solid stability over distance. So now let's begin. Here we have 250 meters Ethernet cable. We're going to plug in to this port. Let's plug into port number five and a couple more powerhouse feature. Now see this port, these four ports are 802.3 BT port. That's up to 90 watts of power, enough for the hungriest PDZ camera or high-end Wi-Fi 6 SS point, even over these long distances. And over here, we have our eight long range port and see these two? These two are the SFP slots for high-speed fiber uplink back to the campus core network if needed. So this switch isn't an island, it's the perfect bridge. Now I'm going to connect a short patch cord to port 17 here, this is the combo port, and directly to our network video recorder so we can display the video footage. Now let's follow our 250 meters ethernet cable all the way to the bullet camera here. Connect it to the bullet camera. And by using PoE, we are sending both power and data to our 4K bullet camera at the end. 
Now, a 4K camera might only need 10 to 15 megabit per second, so this mode optimizes the length for that, ensuring a flawless, stable feed over 250 meters of cable. Now, it's not about raw speed, it's about perfect, reliable delivery. So now we can see our camera is working. I'm waving my hand so you can see this is a live video and it needs a little bit of time to zoom. Now some of you might be thinking, why not just put a small switch out at the far end to serve a few local devices? You could, but then you've created a single point of failure. If that remote switch gets zapped by a search or just fails, every device connected to it goes dark. But with our long range direct link, one device goes down, the rest are completely unaffected, and your downtime is minimized, and your maintenance team will thank you. But remember, the university had some devices clinging to the edge of the map a full 500 meters out. So for these extreme distances, we can use the switch dedicated long range port. Now this port have a special chipset that pushes data at 100 megabit per second way out there. And the trick is, it uses all four pairs of the wires in the cable to send power more efficiently. And for this 500 meters run, you also need a simple PoE extender at very end. Now here we have a 200 meters plus 300 meters Ethernet cable, so total we got 500 meters. I joined them using a coupler, now let's connect our 500 meters Ethernet cable directly to the long range port. Now these eight ports are the long range ports, so it's simple, no need to do the any configuration, just plug it in, and you can take your 500 meters ethernet cable all the way to our extender. Now this extender is IP67 waterproof rated, and it's direct burial, so you can do it easily and perfect for outdoor environment. Now this 500 meters ethernet cable will connect to the input port of our extender. Then we are going to mount it on a DIN rail since this is a DIN rail mount extender. For the Wi-Fi access point, we are going to use another short patch cord. Connect to the output port and directly to the PoE port of our Wi-Fi access point. So now we can see the indicated lights are on. Our Wi-Fi access point is getting both power and data at 500 meters. Now some might wonder why we need this PoE extender. Remember our switch has the long range chipset, but our Wi-Fi access point doesn't. So we need the PoE extender to send the long range signal back to our switch in order to work. And because this is a web smart switch, so we can do crucial network management, like setting up VLANs. With a few clicks on the web interface, we can put all the security cameras on one virtual network and all the student Wi-Fi on another. They share the same physical switch, but their traffic is completely separate. Security and performance handled. So now let me take out my laptop and connect it to the switch. So now I have my computer ready. I'm going to connect the Ethernet cable to the combo port here directly to the switch so I can show you how to log into our web interface and set our VLAN and remember the CCTV mode. Now, after you connect it to the computer, just log in to the web interface. Type in your account number and your password. 
After you log in, you should see everything about the switch. Then we can see the connected port here and all the status. Now let's take a look at port number nine, which is connected to our 500 meters ethernet cable. We're getting full 100 megabit per second. And for port number five connected to our bullet camera, we can see it's already down to 10. Now I'll show you the CCTV mode first. Just go to the switch setting, the port setting, now we can choose the port number. Port five I already set it, so now let's set port number four. And we can go to the speed and let's select 10M, apply. Now when you look at the status, now port number four is already downgraded to 10 megabit per second. So this is how you set the CCTV mode. Now let's get to the VLAN. The VLAN is simple, just go to the VLAN member and create our VLAN. Let's say VLAN 10 is for our security cameras. Okay, let's say just security and hit apply. And we'll set a VLAN 20 for our Wi-Fi access point. Let's hit apply. So now we created the two VLAN. Then go to the VLAN setting Remember, port number nine is connected to our Wi-Fi access point, so we can select VLAN 20 here, hit apply. So our port number nine is already goes into the VLAN 20, and port number four and five, let's set it to our security VLAN, hit apply, and it's done. So it's pretty simple. One last thing, the port that connected to our network video recorder, which is port number 17, we also need to set it under VLAN 10 so they can be under the same security team in order for the data to pass through our NVR. One final pro tip, for any outdoor run, especially long ones like our 500 meters, we recommend you to use surge protectors on both ends. It's cheap insurance for your expensive gear against lightning or power faults. So now let's mount them. We have the indoor and outdoor version. This is our indoor surge protector. And this is DIN reel mounted. All we need to do is mount it through a DIN reel and lock it. It's simple. And make sure you properly ground it your search protector, otherwise it's no use. Now I'm going to unplug our 500 meters ethernet cable from the switch and connect it to the input port. The search will go in here, goes to the earth, and now I'm going to use a short patch cord connect to the output port so we can get clean energy out to our switch. Supply it back to our long range port. So this side, we are perfectly done. Now let's move on to our outdoor environment. For the outdoor switch protector, this is IP67 waterproof rated. Make sure you fasten the neck and the gland, but I'm taking it out for faster installation. Again, unplug the 500 meters ethernet cable from our extender and plug it into the input port of our surge protector. So we can get clean energy out to the extender using a short patch cord. Again, this is DIN reel mounted, so let's put it through our DIN reel and just lock it here. Make sure you probably ground your surge protectors. And now the short patch cord go directly to our extender and to the Wi-Fi SS point. So they can get clean energies. So that's how our clients solve their long range puzzle. No expensive fiber trenches, no spider web of extenders. Just smart, centralized control with bulletproof reliability. Oh, and a quick answer to a question I get all the time. Can this work with non-PoE devices like sensors? 
Absolutely. There's a data-only version of this long-range technology. We'll cover that in a future video, so make sure you're subscribed. Thank you very much for watching. Feel free to leave your campus networking nightmare in the comment section below. And I'll see you in our next video.